Professor Salana, members of the German Parliament of the Deutsche Bundestag, ladies and gentlemen. The digital community has a lot of birthdays to celebrate this year. 20 years of the internet as we know it. Almost 10 years of Facebook and Skype, which have been bringing together people from all over the world. These and other innovations have changed the way we communicate, we work, and indeed live. And Stanford has been at the heart of this revolution. Stanford is where the best and the brightest come together from all over the world. This is where outstanding researchers and scientists put their ideas and visions into practice, where they come up with groundbreaking inventions. This is where ideas are translated into reality. And this is the birthplace of the digital economy. Some like to call Stanford the cradle of Silicon Valley. But Stanford is much more than that. It is the cradle of the digital revolution. And what's even more important, within a short space of time, what began as small startups operating in garages turned into global players. Fred Terman, one of the fathers of Silicon Valley and professor here in Stanford, captured the spirit of the Bay Area when he said, there wasn't much here and the rest of the world looked awfully big. Now, a lot of the rest of the world is here. So it was technology and internet and companies from Silicon Valley that got the ball rolling. And they have been at the epicenter of a digital revolution which started right here in California. They are driven by the motto, think big. And we are here because we want ourselves to be inspired by the unique spirit of the valley. The west coast of California set the pace for the international startup scene. And as the German Minister of Economics and Technology, I think I can safely say that you are the role model for startups everywhere in the world. And as you know, Germany has a thriving economy, one of the strongest in the world. My guess is that the first thing that comes to your minds when you think about the German economy is probably our automotive sector. I saw the advertisement in the TV here in the valley. Fahrvermögen and Vorsprung durch Technik. In the last few days, since I've been here in the valley, I've seen it appears that German cars are pretty popular here in Silicon Valley as well. But guess what? Our IT sector in Germany is even bigger than our automotive industry. And our IT sector is becoming more and more integrated with other strong sectors, mechanical engineering, logistics, and of course, our automotive industry. That's because we want both, a strong manufacturing base and a strong IT sector. We have long understood that the digital sector poses no threat to traditional industry or vice versa. On the contrary, IT is going to make our manufacturing sector more agile, speed up production, create growth, and give us a competitive edge. So the next advertise would be Fahrvergnügen and Vorsprung durch IT. So I'm absolutely certain that the future is all about bringing the digital economy into manufacturing. That's not only good for the industry and not only good for the IT sector, it's good for both and it's more than good, it's the future of the economy. And I'm not only talking about Germany here, no, I'm talking about the future of the global economy. And as a minister, I want Germany to be ready to embrace this future. 
We have one of the strongest economies, just mentioned it to you. And what we need now is an even stronger IT scene in our country. That's why I'm creating a new, better ecosystem for startup companies in Germany. We are setting up programs tailored to the needs of high-tech entrepreneurs who want to start a business from university. We have joined forces with some major German companies and have created a high-tech startup fund. And we have launched a special incubator right here in the valley, the German Silicon Valley Accelerator. It helps German startups to access the American market and find investors from the US. And I'm convinced there are three major issues for the German economy. By the end of the decade, we want to triple the amount of venture capital available to startups, to double the number of annual startups in the digital economy, and we want to get Germany into the top three of international startup locations. At the moment, we are in the sixth place. I think that's not enough. And we do have the potential to make all this happen. Our startup scene is already attracting a great deal of interest internationally. The most impressive example is Berlin. It acts as a magnet for more and more young IT entrepreneurs who make the city their favorite base. And that's hardly surprising. Berlin has much to offer. A buzzing cultural sector, affordable rents, excellent infrastructure, and all this in the very heart of Europe. And we have a strong startup scene all over our republic, but Berlin is a synonym for the German startups. All this explains why we already have a strong IT startup culture and why the scene is becoming increasingly international. We are glad about this development, but we want to go further. We want more of all of this. Our motto is Think big, think better, think Berlin. And almost exactly 50 years ago, your president, John F. Kennedy, said those famous words, Ich bin ein Berliner. Every German knows these words. And today, 50 years later, we now know what he really meant by that. And I'm convinced his vision is now in Berlin and Germany, our political mission. And received an all-time record number of applications by young startup companies who wanted to come with me here in, to the Silicon Valley. You can't even imagine just how many wanted to come. Believe me, all of these entrepreneurs sitting there would have been prepared to swim the Atlantic and walk across America just to be here with you today. And yes, today we are here. 100 startup entrepreneurs, the cream of the crop, and just talk to them and you'll get an idea of how cool our Germany startup scene really is. And indeed, how cool Germany is. My father told me that our family are our European neighbors and partners. And our best friends outside Europe, that is the United States of America. So the great nation on the one hand, and the coolest nation in the world on the other. <laughs> and today's Germany is a country of boundless opportunity. Everyone is welcome. Everyone who wants to make it in Germany. And Professor Solana mentioned, vielleicht, maybe, my living. It's a little bit of proof of that. So you're right. I was born 1973 in Vietnam. Why the Vietnam War? I lost my parents in the Vietnam War. And then my father, who was captain of the German Army Aviation, decided to adopt me from a Catholic orphanage. After the divorce, I was four years old. We lived together, my father and me. And he gave me the opportunity to go to school, to go to college, to make my medical doctor and heart surgery, 
Then I went into politics, became a member of parliament, chairman of the parliamentary group, state minister for economics, labor and transport, federal health minister, chairman of the Free Democratic Party, now vice chancellor and minister for, of economics and technology. So it's a very fast way and it's normal for Germany. <laughs> because if you would ask my father if he is proud of me, he would say, yes, I'm proud of my son, I'm proud of Philip. And if you would ask me, Philip, I would say that's not the question. Maybe I wake up every morning and I'm not every morning proud of my life. But every morning, I'm thankful to Germany because my home country gave me all these opportunities. And not only for me, but for all our companies, for example, as well. Germany is a country of boundless opportunity, a country of success stories. And that's why we have come here today. I invite all of you, maybe you're German, not surprised, but the others, to come to my home country and write your own success stories. You have the opportunity of shaping our future economy, our future industry, in a country where there's no limit to what you can achieve. All you need is some brilliant ideas. And I've have had the opportunity to be here two months ago, and as a gift from the German students here in Stanford, I, I got this shirt. And there you can find your motto. Die Luft der Freiheit weht. It's in German. So that is Germany 2013, a country in which die Luft der Freiheit weht. The coolest nation in the world. Very warm welcome to you. Thank you for your attention. Um, one question from you. I'm interested in your perspective and, and, and maybe you can share your insights. To what extent do you believe that and where actually does sort of Germany as a, uh, as a whole, as industry and the educational system has a competitive edge within uh, sort of the global economy? What, what are the sort of peculiar aspects where you think that sort of collectively what Germany has in terms of education infrastructure and for, for industry has actually a competitive edge that is competitive with, for example, what is coming and going on in the valley. Yes, in the year 2013 means now, yes, we have a competitive edge. But um, we need much more money for infrastructure. But the next few years we have a great issue and that's uh, to come to a stable budget. So that's our first issue. And then the next is investments, for example, in infrastructure. I think we have a very good education system. Schooler system is very good, but uh, we can learn from universities. Maybe how come to much more entrepreneurship in our universities. But the most important pot topic for the German economy is the question of what I mentioned, the merge between classical industry on the one hand and the IT sector on the other. At this moment, 20% of our GDP growth results only because of our IT sector and working in the normal industry with IT. But we want to raise these percentage from now 20% up to 50% in the year 2015. And I think that is the future, not only for one industry, but for the whole industry. For the machinery, you need at this moment software. You need IT. And the health business, you need IT as well. So that would be the future. And so it's a question of competitiveness to raise the potential of your IT sector. That is the reason why we're here. We want to have much more such, from such beautiful startup companies. And now we have nearly 9,000 startups every year. And that's the reason why I want to double up from 9,000 this year to 18,000 in the year 2020. We need it not only for the IT sector, but for the whole industry. Um, 
Hi, my name is Angad. I am a student at Stanford, and I spent six months in Berlin last year researching the startup scene. Um, in my experience, I think the, uh, apart from infrastructure and capital, the two biggest problems that entrepreneurs said they faced uh, for, for starting companies was uh, one, the cultural barrier of Germany being risk averse, and more importantly, the bu bureaucracy that exists in Germany. And I think those are two things that the government can do policy and uh, top-down sort of measures for making happen. And on the other hand, I was recently in Chile, where Startup Chile has supplanted an entrepreneurial ecosystem out of like thin air basically by incubating startups, creating policy sort of uh, highways, that kind of thing. Uh, what is the German uh, agenda in terms of policy for, for improving entrepreneurs and giving them more access to resources? Oh, I hope um, that you can see or our companies can say that we, the German government and the politics and the whole have a strategic approach to raise our start up scene to strengthen it. Maybe we, you mentioned, I think, uh, the question of money, venture capital. We tried to bring up the bigger venture capital companies, maybe from the valley, to Berlin, to Germany. This evening we will have an appointment with the bigger companies from the valley, and maybe we try to invite them, and they will come to us. And only once, but twice, and so on, we want to make a bridge between valley and Germany, especially Berlin. Then we try to come to a better legal framework in Germany in itself. You mentioned bureaucracy. Question to, to found a company. It lasts very long. Maybe we can shorten the period between the idea and the real company. And that is um, not very easy, because that's not only the responsibility of the federal level. For me, as a federal minister, so I have 16 beautiful colleagues. We have the federalism. It's beautiful, but um, it means sometimes some kind of bureaucracy. So it's, uh, it's a challenge. So. And um, we need um, more employees and um, well-trained people. So that is the reason why we try to, to, to make um, some advertisements in the global economy to attract people to come to Germany to work, not only in the IT sector, but in all our industry companies. But uh, that is a problem. But I know that is a problem, maybe not in the valley, but in the whole global economy at this moment. But we try to bring up people and money to Germany. And we have a beautiful basis, good infrastructure at this moment, good educational system, beautiful companies, perfect government. <laughs> Everything good and energy. You're talking about how cool Germany is, but what about the rest of Europe? I mean, Germany's economy might be still okay, uh, even though the depth is pretty impressive. But how will the whole European economy influence uh, the German economy in the future? I said in my speech that um, the European Union is some kind of family for Germany. So it's a question of solidarity, if we want to help, yes or no. And Germany is a strong economy, it's a strong country. We will help our neighbors, our partners, our friends in the European Union. And yes, they have problems, as you know, maybe with their budget and much more with their competitiveness. So we have a special rule in Germany that's called Debt break, and we, we brought our, our colleagues to make such kind of debt break in their constitution. 27 member states this day, after July 28 member states, and 25 of them have these debt break now. And we tried to make reforms together on the labor market, in the social security systems, maybe in the administration and to come to much more privatization. That's our approach in the European Union. Not only the German approach, but it's the approach of the whole European Union. And I think that's a very good idea to reduce the lack and the debt, to come to a better competitiveness. And then you need growth, and we try to bring up growth in the real economy in all our neighbor partners, we have some kind of export initiatives with Portugal, Spain, Italy, and Greece. 
and um, we want to help them. So I'm convinced that maybe if we hold these way, these cause, I think in the next 10 or 15 years, we'll be one of the strongest economy region, European Union, in the world, because <coughs> the problem of debt is not only a European problem. Maybe I read sometimes the newspaper, and I read something about the debt and the fiscal cliff and the other things in other countries and regions in the world. <laughs> so I think um, that's a good way to come to a very stable European <coughs> Union, and not only in economy, but in the whole European Union. Vice Chancellor, um, thanks for being with us here today. Um, so I understand there's obviously been a huge um, amount of growth in terms of startups in Berlin over the last uh, five, 10 years, um, but there's still substantial challenges, as I understand it, um, between uh, for startups operating across the different European countries, and um, it, it, there are still challenges in terms of accessing Europe as an entire uh, market. So curious to hear from a macro policy standpoint, um, how do you sort of address those, those challenges and differences between the countries? Yeah, the different competitiveness is a problem inside the European Union. And what, uh, this problem, we know it f from the beginning of the European Union. But because of the common currency, the euro, there was no necessity, maybe no pressure, to make some reforms to come to a level playing field in the question of competitiveness in all the things I mentioned. So... Now we have a problem because of the debt crisis we have in some member states. So we have to, to come to a solution in the question of the debt. And then, parallel, we try to, to strengthen the competitiveness in the other member states. And um, I think we need time for this operation. Maybe much time, much more time than we now have, maybe five, 10, or 15 years. But at the end, that is our common goal. We want to have level playing field in the question of competitiveness and no lack in the budget. That's my dream. This is a question about taxes. It seems that taxes around the world are a very murky subject and there's always things we're finding out later that people have been doing. Could you estimate which country has the higher taxes? between Germany and the United States? Oh, I'm convinced that uh, we have higher taxes in Germany, but um, maybe it's a, it's a question of the, for politicians in Germany. Um, we are against raising taxes, so. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> ah, member of the Free Democratic Party? Ah, you are the, the second one, thank you. Well, we are warm welcome. So, but, but maybe the taxes in, in Germany much higher than, than, than here in, 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 in the United States. And we do not have only the, the taxes, but we have the fees for the social security systems. So labor is expensive in, in Germany, and that's a problem. But if you see our labor market, I think although we have some problems, it's very successful. So at this moment, we have to, to find the balance between reducing the debt and do not raising the tax. So, and that's the position of my party and my government. No more taxes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, um, one question. Um, given the current situation in many countries in, in Europe and its perspectives, um, and also coupling that with the um, policies to restrict the costs around the European Union, how does Germany um, expect to create a market for their companies? For well, these companies in the other member states? Yeah. Okay, so, so first of all, <laughs> our part of, in the question of solidarity are the mechanism to stabilize the European Union. We have uh, ESM and so on, huge, some kind of funds to, to, to say if they will have horrible problems. We want to help with ESM and so on. So it means European Stability Mechanism. 
And so we have, that's um, the opportunity for our member states, for our colleagues and friends, to gain some kind of time. We want to use the time for these reforms and we want to be a market for them. So we try to strengthen the single market in the European Union, especially in the question of IT, for example. And um, we import this year and last year as well much more from our European friends than we export, especially to the countries like Portugal or so. And um, we try to bring them up not only to the German market as a European neighbor, but to the world market. So I have a good friend, he's Minister for Economics in uh, Portugal, and I said to him, maybe the next business delegation we can make together. And uh, why not? Because the European Union makes it as well. So maybe that is a small opportunity, possibility to help them to find new markets outside Europe, outside the European Union, but we try to help them inside Europe as well. Yeah, sehr geehrter Dr. Uh, Dr. Rüssler, um, I've, I came to the United States five years ago. I am a German American, currently working here at Intel in the Valley. And um, you indicated your desire to bring back uh, German talent back to Germany. I, as myself, also have the desire to come back to Germany. But um, as a tech worker, I, I have to admit I really like it here, um, especially from the financial um, perspective. Um, I know that um, Germany has some problems to attract um, for um, German researchers back to the back to Germany through special programs like uh, uh, startup funds um, to to open up their own research groups at universities. But I haven't. But I'm not that quite aware of these concepts or these programs for um, industrial workers or high tech workers in in the Valley or in the United States. Are there any plans or any ideas on this to attract um, uh, German industrial high tech workers from the United States back to Germany? We have a huge internet platform that's called the Make It in Germany. Hmm? Make It in Germany. And uh, we, we try to attract all the kind of workers we have. Not only IT, but industry as well. Um, and we, we try to bring up some special programs to come to an exchange. And in the end, at the end of the exchange, that um, maybe foreign stu students wanted to, to stay in Germany. So you decided to stay in Valley, so if I understand you right, okay. Very sad, but it's okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So we have an opportunity to, to the chance to, to, that you can, will come back to Germany, okay. So we have n not a special program for, 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 but not for IT, but we have these make it in Germany. And we have special colleagues in our embassies. It's a program. Now we have it in, in, in India, Singapore, and I think in Vietnam. And we to try to bring up uh, young students and maybe the pupils to, to Germany. And, uh, but not engineers at this moment. But we try to come to a better legal framework and the question of foreign workers. Um, that's a debate with my friends and colleagues in the coalition because I want some culture of welcome in Germany for all people. And um, there we have different positions at this moment. But maybe after the election. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's a question that I also almost wanted to ask you about uh, dual citizenship. So if you say you want to invite people coming to Germany, so those people have families, kids growing up, but they kind of grew up in two cultures, right? And now that at some point they have to decide which um, passport to hold. Is this going to change? Can we hold two passports? Um, can everyone who is coming to Germany do that? And also people who come from Germany here, can we hold that as well? Right? I think it's absolutely necessary uh, that we have uh, the possibility to, to, to have two passes if you want to come to, to I think, to any country. And, and if, uh, I, I think there's no argument against two passes at this moment. But that's a question in my party she is correct, but, but my, my colleagues in the other parties are against these two passes at this moment. But I think it's a, it's a very strong s signal. It's, it's, 
it would be some kind of statement. If you say yes, we have the possibility of having two passes. So, much to do. Maybe you can say it to the colleagues. Yeah, please do. Members of Parliament. Yeah. Do a nationality. Lesson learned. Herr Vizekanzler, many thanks that you're here today with us. Uh, I get many questions here about the German energy transformation, the shift to green energy and how it works compared to here. I mean, I just had a chance to sit in a Tesla and see how startups play a big role here in the shift to green energy. What's your view on the role of startups in Germany in the energy transformation and the role of the energy transformation for the future economy in Germany? Okay, how many times? <laughs> Okay, so I think it's a, a great opportunity for our startup companies, the whole energy change, our energy vendor, because uh, we need grids, we need power plants, energy efficiency, renewable energy. And um, for all these, we need IT. For example, if you want to have not only the grid for the longer terms, but for the short terms, you need some, some special grid. We call it smart grid. And we need companies for the smart grid. It's a question of IT. We need um, much more efficient power plants. And um, not only in the center of, of maybe our industry, but more <coughs> decentered. So we need um, some kind of virtual power plant. So we need IT and startup for these as well. We need um, more energy efficiency. And that is a part of smart grid. But it's a question of... Um, energy and using of energy in the whole. And uh, we want to, to raise electromobility in, in, in Germany. And so it's an opportunity for all our companies, not only for the IT, but for the industry. And all these parts shows that there is a future in the fusion between industry and IT. And um, you mentioned the, maybe the challenges in the energy vendor. And uh, yes, the problem is is it affordable for the people and for the companies, yes or no? And um, at this moment, it's very expensive. The support of our renewable energy is very expensive. I have not enough time to explain it to you, but it's, at this moment, it's a um, law which has only subsidies. The members of the parliament decides about the price for a kilowatt hour in Germany, not the market, the member of parliament. So, so, so that's plant economy and not s social market economy. And because of being a plant economy, it's very expensive at this moment. So we try to bring up a new law to support renewable energy. We want to raise the part of renewable energy. We have at this moment 25% in electricity. And we want to raise it to 35% in the year 2022. So uh, we have much to do in the question of the energy vendor about the huge opportunity, chances for our companies, especially in the IT sector, but in the whole industry. So I'm optimistic. As the chairman of the Free Democracy, you must be optimistic. Berlin, arm a bear sexy. Um, I realize that one of the problems that people have nowadays is the gentrification going on in areas such as Neukölln, Prenzlauerberg, and Kreuzberg. So I was wondering how you see startups as helping solve the problem of being a poor area of Berlin being a poor part of Germany, but also preserving the sexy culture that people praise about Berlin. Um, yes, I said that Berlin is a synonym for the German startup scene. So we have in all of our parts in Germany some kind of, of startups in the internet scene. So, uh, but it's one part of our economy. And, and I, I try to strengthen it, yes, because it's important for the whole industry, but, but we have to do anything f in, in, in different parts of the economy as well. So I think the best way to fight against uh, poverty, poverty is to, to bring people in jobs. And um, all the other questions we mentioned, taxes and raising competitiveness, is to bring the people in jobs. And that's the best measurement against
property. Uh, we have the debate in Berlin, so it's a, it's a, it's a local discussion, but, but, but in my opinion, I think if we have companies and the companies have richer people than the people before in the, in, 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 in the region or in the area and parts of Berlin, I think it would not be a longer problem because they, they produce jobs as well in, in the in quarters of Berlin. So I think um, it's, uh, it's a little bit funny, this discussion, because they, they come to a to, to, um, more sexier city, yes, but I think it's, it, the, the, the goal is for, for every people, and not only for, for our hip startup companies. We need, we, we, need, we need these companies, and I think Berlin needs these companies. And uh, that is the reason why I think the Berlin government, local government, must have an interest in modernizing the city, the infrastructure, the buildings. And now they have a law um, that said that you are not allowed to come to renovieren? renovate, renovate your, your own house or your own apartment. I think that's, that's not the Luft der Freiheit weht. Hi, so my question is about the immigration reform. And as you all know, most of the growth in the valley was because of foreign nationals being here when they started a company and not especially being that they came to the, to the valley to start a company. So what, are there any immigration reforms on your agenda that you're planning to implement in the near future? If you would ask me as a chairman of one part of the coalition and as a smaller part of the coalition, yes because we need uh, the dual nationality and um, maybe we need the possibility to come to us to study in Germany and to stay in Germany after you're studying and then you can found, for example, a company. But it's only a short period. We prolonged this period in the last law, I think, one year ago, but it's, I think, in my opinion, too short. If you have major studying, maybe you need some time to, to, to look around in companies, and maybe then you decide to found a company of your own. So I think uh, that would be a topic for the next reform. And then we, we have a structured system, for example, in Canada, which people are allowed and welcome and which not. So I think we need some kind of, of, of structured system to come to more foreign people in Germany. Um, Dr. Ursula, thank you very much for your speech. Um, I have two questions. The first one would be, of course, the upcoming election, what your view on that is, and also not just what your um, wishful, the wishful out outcome would be, but also what would kind of be other versions of a possible outcome of the election that would not be the perfect outcome for you, but other possible ways that you see for your party to be still part of the um, part of the government. And the second question would be more personal. Um, you mentioned like how it is to get up every morning and, and what your vision you have for Germany. But um, as some of the Germans in the, in the room probably know, you went for a very difficult time kind of taking over the leadership of your party. And I can also assume being the counterpart of Angel Merkel is probably not the most easiest job in the world. So what, how do you personally go for that tough decision where you're like in such kind of the center of all the publicity and also positive and also very often the negative publicity. How do you do that personally? Okay, I think the first question was, was will happen after the election? Ah, okay, yes. Nein, habe ich richtig verstanden, passt schon. Um, <laughs> Sie können auch alle Deutsch, oder? Uh, I think we are in a very successful coalition. Look at our figures and numbers in Germany in comparison to Europe or to the United States, I think we can be very proud of what we reached in the last four years. So that is only one position in my party. We want to continue this coalition. And that is my goal and the goal for my party. And there's no alternative to this. Not only for me, but for the people in Germany as well. And, and you, you, I think you said it's not the easiest job to be the, 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 the deputy of Chancellor Merkel. Mm, yes, maybe the easiest job in, 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 in Germany is to be Chancellor Merkel. And, and, and the second easiest job is to, to be 
her deputy. But uh, you're right, it was not the, the easiest time in the last two or three months. But it's a question of uh, if you are optimistic, yes or no. And if you will fight, yes or no. And um, so that, that, that if you are an entrepreneur, you have similar situations. And you have to decide whether to give up or to fight. And I decided to fight, and now I'm here. Last question. Hi, my uh, father works at the, one of the few remaining companies in Germany that produce solar panels. So my question is, what do you see uh, for the future of sol solar panel manufacturing in Germany? Thank you. Yes, maybe it's better to, 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 to look at different sectors. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, because in Germany we have, I mentioned the special law to support renewable energy. And they do not support some technology. They support the people who decided to, 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 to buy wind energy power plants or photovoltaic power plants, so, so, for, for solar cells. So, and if you, if you give subsidies to the people, not to the companies, and maybe for the research or so, uh, you will have a problem because, what's that the guy? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you use Chinese solar power panels or German photovoltaic cells, and uh, because they are much cheaper than our, so so they used the Chinese ones, and um, that is not good. And if you have um, a law which said, if you use now this law, you have the next 20 years every time the same price. It's very good for you, but there's no pressure for innovation. That's against every market law. And so the problem is that our photovoltaic sector is not as competitive as maybe other sectors in the world and other regions in the world. So I think um, it's a problem at this moment. And we have a debate with the European Commission because they want to come to to the punishment, to the penalties for the Chinese um, companies because of, of um, their subsidies. But um, the subsidies are not the real problem, but the financing situation in Germany. So it's better to, to, to leave these punishments and penalties because it would be the beginning of a um, fight between China and Europe, and that's not very good for Europe, I'm convinced, especially in this situation. So I hope they find a solution. Thank you all for being here. Um, and please join me in thanking uh, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Rossler. Maybe, uh, so, so, maybe yeah. They all call me Vice Chancellor, but to say the truth, it sounds beautiful, Vice Chancellor, but, but we have only the rule, someone is deputy of the chancellor, that's right, that's me, that's an interesting position. And, but, but we have no vice chancellor like you have the vice president. The vice president has no job without being vice president. And I'm minister for economics, so there's a, a totally different position. I'm very sad about it, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, no, but, no problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, join really. me in thanking on behalf of GSB and the Stanford community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you.